Ford, earlier on in the year, killed the Ford Fiesta, one of the best-selling cars in the UK and one of the best-selling cars worldwide for Ford. So why did they kill off this small car? Well, this video is going to be looking at that and why there's waiting lists for Hyundai i10 and other small ICE cars that have a waiting lists of eight months for a tiny car. Meanwhile, big petrol gas guzzlers and diesel cars that used to be pre, pre uh, last year have waiting lists of several months as well. Now the thing is in reverse. Now we have waiting lists on small cars and same month delivery on the big fat gas guzzlers. This video is going to tell you exactly why that is and what the mechanisms behind it are causing. So first we need to understand how emission targets work last year. Last year, emission targets were based on a thing called CAF targets. CAF targets was basically an inherited CO2 emission thing from the European Union that we followed as well. And it basically said that they had a certain set number of CO2. So if you sold hybrid cars, you sold pure electric cars, it would bring down your average CO2 level. And also, if you had small cars like the Ford Fiesta, Hyundai i10, these cars were very low emission. So selling a few hundred of these made very little difference, but selling a large heavy car that was based on the weight and CO2 would really massively affect the total CO2 value of your weight class of your cars. So now we're seeing that total reverse, and there's a reason behind that. So this year, the target changed. We went to a system called ZEV Mandate. Now, CAF target still exists, but you have to hit ZEV Mandate, and if you hit ZEV Mandate, you automatically are going to hit the target for CAF, because CAF is a less severe target than ZEV Mandate. ZEV Mandate restricts the amount of total sales you have to sell. You have to sell a set percentage of total sales of pure electric cars. Hybrids are out, the weight doesn't matter, it has to be a pure electric car for, um, and it's set percentage for every petrol or diesel car you sell. So that means if you sell 100 i10s, 100 Ford Fiestas, you're going to have to sell, I think at, the, at the moment, I think it's just over 22% of your total sales of pure electric cars. I have done a video with the exact percentages, but off the top of my head I can't remember. So that means that for every one of those petrol cars you sell, you're going to have to sell a certain set amount of those electrics, which means if you're selling 100 Ford Fiestas or 100, 100 I Hyundai i10s, a tongue twister that, then you have to sell 20 odd percent of pure electric cars. So why sell 100 of one of your cheapest, lowest profit margin cars when you could reserve some of that target back and sell 100 of your most profitable cars like your Hyundai Tuscans and your Ford, your Ford Cougars and your heavier, larger, more, you know, less CO2 efficient cars but more profit margin because you have to sell those EVs anyway. But this doesn't fully explain why kill off the Ford Fiesta. Well, we'll get back to that in a minute, but let's first talk about the short-term issue and long-term issue that not selling small ICE cars currently causes. First of all, manufacturers are going to have to push two messages. One, buy EVs. We need to sell the EVs to hit the set percentage. EVs are great. But they also need to push the message We'd really like you to buy this three litre petrol diesel vehicle because we make the most money out of it. Unfortunately, these smaller cars aren't available for sale at the moment. Does that mean we're going to have a small issue where we're going to have higher pollution, larger cars on the road rather than smaller petrol cars that pollute significantly less fumes in CO2? Now, in theory, this should balance out the ZAV mandate and how many petrol, uh, sorry, how many EVs they have to sell, but how many. How, how much emissions does a large petrol car put out on local pollution compared to, a, you know, a several small cars? It's going to be a temporary problem, I think. Now, the bigger problem is going to be in two to three years, if these cars are leased, and even if privately owned, they're going to be entered the used car market in about two, three years' time. That's 2028-ish. That means that we're going to be dumped in three to four years' time with a flood of heavy petrol and diesel cars on the used market, just as the time we're only a couple of years away from a total ban on ICE sales brand new. So why cancel the Ford Fiesta? Well, for the reasons that are in this video and the first reasons I mentioned, it was one of the best selling vehicles. If you have the best selling vehicle and you're selling lots of them, and that's you know what you're selling, then you have to sell a lot of EVs to make up that, that, that difference in target. It's a pain in the neck for Ford. It's a very low profit car, a very popular car. So lots of people buy it. Therefore, they have to sell lots of EVs. And Ford have a huge problem at the moment. They don't make really any EVs. They sell the Ford Mustang, but it doesn't sell particularly well. And it's a very expensive car. And they just announced recently the Ford Explorer. Again, another large expensive car. 
Ford don't really have a bulk cheap EV like the Fiesta was a cheap petrol car. They don't have a cheap EV. Why they don't, I don't know. The latest figures I saw from Ford is they're really struggling to get anywhere near a Zev mandate, even without the Ford Fiesta. So imagine how difficult it would be if they still had it. Now, what are Ford's going to do by the end of the year? That's going to be really interesting. If you're wondering what the most affordable electric car new is at the moment, check out this video. But if you want to learn more about the Zev mandate that I spoke about, then check out this video here.